Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's good, but I'm going to make a, few, a little bit of commentary. It's really good. You'll get some points. There's a little detail. So it's really good. All right. So let's talk about how to graph this. So a lot of you are, are right on the money in terms of your axis and in terms of, you know, the bars. All right. So a histogram is a type of is a type of bar graph where the bars are touching. Um, Obviously, our frequencies here, I mean, I don't know what scale I'm going to pick, but let's just use very simple scale for me. Just not just a simple scale. It's a convenient scale. Now, a lot of you went for the first class. You went one through five. The problem is that when you go, when you do the next one, six through 20, and there's a gap between one. Well, you, if you would do that, then you have to do zero through six. And then you would have to do six through 21. Yeah. Uh, you got to make, I'm not even sure that might work. I just, you got to be careful of how you proceed with this because you got to maintain the same width. All right. So let me just take a look at this for a second. Do the, do the, do the classes have the same width? No. So can we, can we graph frequency? No, we have to call, graph something called what? Yes, do you remember frequency density? Your frequency density is your frequency. And I, I'll, did I have space up there? Yeah, I'll do it over here. So your frequency density is what? Your frequency divided by your class width. So that's one important factor here. Now, the next thing you have to worry about, if I were doing this, I would use midpoints, make my life easy to represent the class. Or you can, you can, you can also, I mean, because you want to show the whiffs, you might want to do it that way where you have one, uh, zero through six, and then six through whatever, but you got to make sure you maintain the whiffs. That's the important part. Okay, do you want to try that now on your own? Okay, so let me pause the uh, recording and let me sure let me sure I don't press stop. So the next one will be nine. And then what's a class width for the second class? Well, you take take 21 and subtract six, you get what? 15. Well, okay, so how do you do the class width? You subtract or you subtract two consecutive lower or upper class limits. Take, take 35 and, and, and subtract uh, 20. What does it give you? Okay, it gives you 15. Oh, okay. And if you take 21 subtract 6, you get 15. Or if you take 20 minus 6, you get what? 14. 14. And add 1, it's 15. That's another way you can do it. So then you take, you're going to take 9 and divide it by? 15. So this frequency density is 0.6. And this is a kind of kind of like a gotcha question, you know? You you did your graph, you graphed it, and they're like, oh, well, we're not gonna give you that much points because you didn't do frequency density. And then they'll look at you and say, Oh, well, you know what? Another thing you didn't do. You didn't make sure you adjusted for the gaps between the classes. So that's that's what they do. All right, so look at the next one. What's, what's 36 minus 21? 15, right? Or you could do 35 minus 21 and add one is 15. So 21 divided by 15, that's 1.4. And the next one, the class width for the next one is, I messed up this one here. What's the, what's the class width for the next one, for the next class? 25, right? 15 divided by 25 is 0.6. And the last one, the class width is what? 20? 42 divided by 20. Do you guys understand what I'm doing? Yeah. Now, I'm going to use midpoints. So up here, I'm going to do midpoints. One plus five is six, six divided by two is three. So I'm gonna use three to represent this class. Yeah. 
Now, this is harder to do when you do it this way. All right. 6 plus 20 is 26 divided by 2 is 13. Um, 21 plus 35, divide that by 2, that's 28. 36 plus 60, divide that by 2, that's 48. And 61 plus 80, divided by 2, that's 70.5. Uh, I didn't like that one, but whatever. Or you could do this. Or you could do this. You could do class boundaries. This is, I think this is the one they would prefer. Like what you would do is you would make, instead of one through, one, through five, you would say 0 0.5 to 1.5, uh, to 5.5. And then you would say 5.5. Let me write sideways at least to get some space. You would write 0 0.5 to 5.5, 5.5 to 20.5. 20.5 to 35.5, 35.5 to 60.5, 60.5 .5 to 80.5. You could do that too. In other words, you, you look at the gap between five and six and you say that's one. So you break it in half and you say, I'm going to just make five go up to five and a half and I'll make six go down to five and a half. But if I do it on the left side or the right side, I got to repeat it on either side. So if I add 0.5 to 5.5, I must subtract 0.5 to 1, so that the width stays the same, because then not the width will change. How did you find the measurement for 5 plus 1 is? Divided by 2? No, no, no. I don't even have the Okay, you start talking about the class boundary. Okay, the class boundary. All right, so what happens is the class boundaries, we can't have gaps between the, the bars, right? So the reason we have a gap is because right here between five and six, there's a freaking gap. So what we do is we say, okay, what, how big is that gap? So can I split that gap half and half between the classes so they can come together? So if I add 0.5 to five, it's 5.5. And I take away 0.5 to six, it becomes 5.5. Is the gap eliminated? And then you just repeat it for every single number. On the left side, you take away 0.5. On the right side, you add 0.5. And then you will eliminate your gap. You have to, to one. Because if not, you change the gap, the, the width of your, of your class. You, whatever you do to the right, you have to do to the left okay. on every single class. This is, the, this is what they prefer you to do because what happens is now you have this, you make these little lines here, 5.5, right? So then you go five more. This is the other important part. You can't just now write whatever you want. You can't write 20.5 there. You got to write what's five more or 5.5? That's 10.5. And then you have 15.5. You see that? And then now you have 20.5. You see that? And then you have 25.5. And what happens is it's, it's inconvenient, but that's just the way it is. Um, let me make my frequency density here. Not the best frequency density, but whatever, close enough. So for for zero uh, for zero point five through five point five, it comes out to four point eight. So I make my bar. And for some people, you might want to write this four point eight. And then for for five point five through twenty point five, it's point six. So now this looks like this. You see that? And that's so important that, that you do that. So it looks very different than the graph you did. Because by doing frequency density, you're allotting for different class widths. Now, in regular statistics, we don't do this. We just make sure every, every class has the same width. And we don't have to make this adjustment using frequency density. OK? So and, and, and this is the cumbersome part about this. You know, you have to you know, do this and then, ah, uh, damn it. Okay, so let me just make my line a little bit bigger. And you have to just keep on doing this. It's just, it's, it's a little bit, you know, you do your 30, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. So look how many lines I got to make. And 
you're just each of them supposedly is equidistant, not the best graph. And just to think that this is just one part of the question. So the next one is from uh, 20.5 to 35.5 and it's 1.4. So it's like 20.5 to uh, 35.5 and it's 1.4. Uh, next one is um, 35.5 to 60.5. So it's even wider and it's down here. Which makes sense, guys. So I know some of you did your graphs and you did great graphs. I was looking, I'm like, wow, and it's nice, but you would have technically gotten some points, but maybe depending on how they decide to grade that year, it might not be the best points. It might just be like, we don't like you, you know? Like how your teacher sucks. He didn't teach you this, you know? So there, that's it. Does it look different than the one you did? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's just, that just takes care of this part. Now they're, get, they're giving you five points here. So that's worth something. And that's a question. I'm sorry, everybody here, if you're prepared, you should get this. You should get it right on the test because it's not that hard. There's no math going on there. Now, part part two, part two is a part that's that's interesting, and you should know how to do it. Do you want to try it on your own? Part two. Do you want me to go ahead and proceed? <laughs> okay. So let me go ahead and pause the recording. Let me. Um... So so we have a group frequency distribution. I'm going to go ahead and. And write the numbers. You you won't you won't see it up there on the board, but I'll change it. So I'll just I'll just write classes here. And it's one through five, six through twenty, twenty-one through thirty-five, thirty-six through sixty, sixty-one through eighty, and then you have um, the frequency. And you have twenty-four, you have nine, you have twenty-one, you have fifteen, and you have forty-two. And, and you want to find the mean, right? So I'll go ahead and let me go ahead and put this on the table. I can, I can move around. I have enough battery. So there you have your, your class, the group frequency distribution, and you're supposed to find the mean. Does anybody know how to find the mean? It is that that is the mean for a binomial distribution not for this type of distribution so it's the sum of x times f divided by the sum of f but here's our problem who for one through five who's going to act as our x the mean oh well the mean of the midpoint the midpoint of the class. So let's go ahead and write here, the X is the midpoint. Five plus one is six, six divided by two is three. 26 divided by two is 13. Um, the next one's 28. The next one is um, 48. And the last one is 70.5. So if you were gonna compute the mean here, you would take three multiplied by 24 plus 13 times nine plus, let me go ahead and zoom out of here so you guys can see. I do. All right, there we go. A little bit too far, I think. Okay, uh, the next one is going to be 28 times 21 plus um, 48 times 15 plus 70.5 times 42. And then we're gonna divide all this by the sum of F. By the way, what was the sum of F here? If you add all those numbers up, what did you get here? Supposedly 111. So if you were doing this, you would, you would carry out that math. You would carry out that math. Go ahead and 
and um, pause the recording. So the numerator is 4,458 divided by 111. And that's approximately um, 40.2. So you would round by like Oh, it depends. The question here doesn't tell us what to do. Um, that's fine. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't report that as a 40. Like you wouldn't say, or you wouldn't say 40. 40.2, 40.16. That makes sense to do. All right, so let's see if we can do the third one. The third one says, state which class contains the lower quartile and which class contains the upper quartile. Hence, find the least, find the least possible value of the interquartile range. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just rewrite the table up here, the grouped frequency distribution. Say again. I, I want to I wanna keep them separate for a second. There's a reason I want to do that. Um, I, I completely, look what I just did. Okay, let me just. Now, the best way to see who, where the quartiles are, thank you, mama, are by doing my commutative frequency. Right, so here's what I do. I do what's uh, this will be 24, and then you do 24 plus nine, that's 30. Plus 21 more, 51. So by the time I get to 35, I would have counting numbers up to 35. I would have had 51 numbers that I've counted. Now I should end up at the end of this with 111 when I add 42 to this number. And I don't end up with 111. What, what number is it? Which one? Did, but did I miss something? Oh. Thank you. That's so important. I what I inverted a nine. Incredible. And I wrote a nine, right? There it is. Can't miss it. So let me fix my uh, cumulative frequency distribution. Then add a forty-two. One hundred eleven. So here we have a hundred eleven. Now. What, the, what are the quartiles? The quartiles divide the, the, um, the data into quarters. So if I take 111 and I multiply, so 111 and I multiply it by 0.25, what would it give me? Well, there's a, let's say it was 100. The 25th number would be where the first quartile would be. The 50th number is where the second quartile would be. And the 75th number would be where the third quartile would be. So if I if now I have 111 numbers, if I, if I multiply 111 times 0.25, it tells me that the 27.75th number, which is not true, but I got an idea where that's happening. That's happening like here, somewhere there. And I take 111 and I multiply it by, because, by the time I got to the end of this guy, I would have counted 24 numbers. But when I, when I can, the commutative frequency, you see that? That's why I needed to do commutative frequency. If I take 111 and I multiply it by 0.5, I get 55.5. So I know my second quartile happens somewhere here. So my median is somewhere and I shouldn't do that. I should do it on the opposite side. I should say that my first quartile is happening here. My second quartile is happening here. Now, let me make sure that I, I realize where the third quartile is going to happen. Because I'm going to take 111. I'm going to multiply it by 0.75. 
right? And that comes out to 83.2. So now I know, now I know that's going to be here. My third quartile happens somewhere along here. All right, so which one are you saying? For the second quartile. We don't have to worry about it because the question didn't ask us about the second quartile. Because remember that, how did we find our quartiles? Remember what we did first? We found the second quartile, which is the median. So I just wanted to show you just where the median would be because the question, you could change this question and ask where, where, what class is the median in? And then you would know that the class is from 21 to 35. You don't know where it happens. You see what I'm saying? Okay. There's a, there's a bunch of ways you can proceed with this question. You could, you, I can make you find an approximation of the median there as well. So what do we have now? Well, it, the question specifically asked for um, find, find the least possible values of the interquartile range. So, wait, let me just make sure I acknowledge my wife. There we go. I acknowledge her. So for the first quartile, it could be between six through 20, any one of those numbers. And for the third quartile, it could be between 61 and 80. Now the question says, find the least possible value of the interquartile range. So you could, the interquartile range, if you remember, is just quartile three minus quartile one. Maybe, maybe it was 80 minus 20. Maybe it was 80 minus six. Maybe it was 61 minus 20. Maybe it was 61 minus six. You see? So which one's the smallest value? Well, let's see. This comes out to 74. 61 minus 20, that's 41. And 61 minus six, that's 55. So what is the smallest value we could have had our inner quartile range? There we go. The smallest value we could have for IQR is 41. Does that make sense? Obviously, you're using the extremes of the classes to determine that, but so do you see what a simple problem this is, but at the same time, do you see how? I'm recording this part now. Okay, so that's how you do your mean. Now, if you want to do your variance, I would use the, the shortcut. But Well, this one, they're, they are the same, but they look different. This one, this one here, you would have to take five minus 2.7 squared plus negative two minus 2.7 squared plus 12 minus 2.7 squared, plus seven minus 2.7 squared, plus negative three minus 2.7 squared, right? This other one, I would just have to figure this out here, this part here. So you would have 25, four, 144, uh, 49, nine, four, 36, 16, uh, zero and 64, you would add up all those numbers and that would give you the sum of X squared. Once you have sum of X squared, you have N, which is 10, and you have X bar already, the mean 2.7, and you just put it in that formula. Correct, correct. So let me go ahead and just do it, the math with the calculator, 24. And that's a lot easier than doing the other method. You save so much time doing this method. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start writing in the black when I finish adding, because I have to add up all these numbers. Um, plus nine, I start at 49 plus nine plus four plus 36 plus 16 plus 64. That's 350. So I get 350. So when I add up all these numbers, my sum, and I'll write, I'll write it in purple this time. My sum of x squared is 350. 
So if I take 350, I'll just rewrite the formula so you can see it. So it's the sum of x squared divided by n minus x bar squared. That's 350 divided by um, 10 minus uh, 2.7 squared. So you would do that. That's 35, basically. 35 minus 2.7 squared. And um, I'm going to do this with a calculator. Calculator. So divide this by 10, 350 divided by 10 minus 2.7 raised to the second power. And we have 27.71. And that this is your variance. If you square root that, what do you get? What's it called, the square root of the variance? Standard? There we go. I'll pause the recording. So are you going to buy a new ring card? I did already. I spent like $10,000 doubling the carrot of a ring from from three quarter carat to 1.5 carat. Oh. <laughs> Things got expensive. All right, guys. Um, for number 51, uh, 51, four I, we had 61 numbers here and we added this up. So we want to do the median because we're going to have to do the median first in order to figure out the quartiles. Okay. Then it, since this is odd, we take 61 plus one divided by two. That's 62 divided by 2, and that's 31, so the 31st number. And we agree that we count the 31st number happens right here. So we know that the median is 0.52. Now, that's the 31st number. That means that how many numbers are behind it before it? If you're the 31st number, how many numbers come before you? 30. So there are 30 numbers from here to here. And that's even. What's 30 divided by 2? So you're going to take the 15th and the 16th, add those two together and divide by 2. So now you count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This guy and this guy. You're going to take point, what? 40 plus 0.42 and divided by two, that comes out to point 41. And that's your first quartile is equal to 0.41. Let me lasso that and move it a little bit. Now the next one, you do the same thing. You count from after point 40, uh, point 52, one, two, three, four, five, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's this guy and this guy. So you're going to get 0.78 plus 0.80 divided by 2, which is 0.79. So your second quartile is 0.79. And guess what? You just got three points. Now, the next one says you're given that the median lower quartile and upper quartile for smartphones of type B are 0.46. So this is the median. Median. Uh, 0.36 is the first quartile or lower quartile. And the upper quartile, the third quartile, is 0.63, respectively. Represent the data by drawing a box and whisker plot. So what you do is you do this. You make, it says, represent the data by drawing a pair, a pair of box and whisker plots in a single diagram on a graph paper. So they want you to do for type A and type B, right? So how do you do this? Well, it's super simple. And we got four minutes. So let me go ahead and try to wrap it up. So here we go. And the first thing you do is you make that, you got to make that number line and you pick a scale. So it ranges from uh, 0.21 to 0.98. Oh, okay, doesn't matter. So uh, 0 0.20, 0 0.30, I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to go ahead 0 0.40, 0 0.50. 0 0.60. Not too much resolution here, but a quick sketch 0 0.80 0 0.90 um 1.0 
And so, so we're going to do type, type A here. We're going to do type B here. And what you do is you go ahead and do, okay, uh, 0.23 is the small number. 0.23 is the minimum. So you put a dot. This is 0.23. Um, the maximum for type A is 0.98. 0.98. Um, the first quartile, the first quartile is 0.41. Oh my gosh, she's not gonna stop today. This is her way of making up to me for her mistake. Um, what she did is overreact. 0.52. She better know her place. All right, and so, oh man, I'm recording too. So, but I have a new belt, guys. Did you say thank you? Oh, I, I did. No, not yet. Hey. Yes. Hi, can I have Emily Rodriguez for your dismissal, please? I don't, th I don't think I have an Emily Rodriguez. Okay, thank you. There, I think that's next period. All right, so this is type A. So some people like to write the numbers that these are associated with. 0 0.41, 0 0.79. And then we have, uh, no, sorry, 0.52 and 0.79. And so now you, you create the part B, type B. Type B, the smallest number for type B was 0.21. So now you put the dot here, 0.21. And then the first quartile is uh, point, uh, 0.36. So it's right here, 0.36. And then... The next one is 0.46, that's the median. So we got 0.36, up 0.46, and then you have 0.63. Hey, you guys know what show I'm thinking in my mind right now? I'm thinking about, um, about the show on, on Disney Plus um, that we sh There's many. I know, the um, Scarlet, Scarlet, the Scarlet Woman. Oh, Scarlet Johansson. There you go. Was that it? Black Widow. Black Widow. Oh. Why are you thinking about that movie? I don't know why. I know it's a show. All right, guys. Now take a look at it. So what can we say? Compare the loading times for these two types of smartphones. You could say that type A has a longer loading time than type B. You can also, well, in terms of, in terms of uh, their, their skew, they're both similarly skewed to the right. So whenever, whenever this middle bar, the median is on the left side, we say it has a right word skew. When the uh, median is on the right, we say it's a left word skew. Um, we can compare the spread maybe, like the, the IQR is a measure of the spread there. You can also talk about that. So in general, you wanna talk about shape, center, and spread. And outliers. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Don't die. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay alive.